we're going to get started here. Um, this is the audiovisual smart classrooms and podiums session. So if you're not in, interested in this session, you're in the wrong room. Um, my name is Ken Wu, and I'm with Northwestern University School of Law. With me is uh, Larry Curtis. He is with University of Tulsa School of Law. And we're going to talk about today is some of the things that we do, we did at our school, and uh, lessons learned, what not to do. And we're going to show you, I'm going to start off with a small video clip, okay? It's about three minutes, instead of PowerPointing everybody to death all day, so don't fall asleep, okay? Everybody hear me? How about now? <laughs> Sorry. sound. Welcome to the Northwestern University Technology Project Showcase. This interactive CD will show you how technology is developed and used to empower people at Northwestern and beyond. Choose a category on the left to view the list of related projects. Then choose a project button to learn more. Smart classrooms provide multimedia capabilities to select classrooms around campus. They are continually being evaluated and upgraded to ensure usability by students and faculty. Around 1999, the provost and the president both began sensing as well as hearing from faculty that it was time to turn attention to the smart classroom effort once again. Keeping an attention span these days, reading through chapters and chapters of a textbook is a lot more tedious than just looking it up on the internet or seeing a PowerPoint presentation or getting the information where you can see it, hear it, understand it with colors and sound just gets to you a lot better. Nothing is inex inexpensive today so even with a significant investment you can only make a little progress every year and some resources have been devoted to boosting the quality and the number of smart classrooms. Every six months a new a uh, projector will come out, a new um, way of implementing the technology, a new touch panel, a new version of, of everything we install in the podium for use by the faculty. And we need to think about strategies for uh, adapting the classrooms to meet a particular need. So what you might think about is the possibility that uh, you have the, the, the smart classroom capability in some kind of a mobile unit 
and you put it where you need it. So this guy needs it here at this hour. You put it there. This guy, somebody like me, needs a kind of baby system over here, so you can put that there or have that in the classroom all the time. Move those those resources around. I think every classroom at Northwestern should eventually become a, a smart classroom. They've got some of them have both Macs and PCs. They have projectors. They have some of them have digital cameras. It just makes everything so much more visually oriented. During uh, the last academic year, the university put close to half a million dollars into both upgrading uh, many of the existing smart classrooms and through the help of Peter Barris, who made a substantial contribution to Campaign Northwestern, we were able to, uh, this past summer, build six new or additional smart classrooms. Part of the challenge during the next couple years here at Northwestern will be to finish off the work in terms of catching up with all of the deferred maintenance in our smart classrooms and then figuring out how our model is going to evolve for bringing in what I think is going to be more and more video conferencing opportunities or requirements in at least some of our rooms here on campus. That was part of uh, Northwestern, the Maine University's initiative. It's a 10-year initiative to upgrade every single classroom on campus with uh, smart podium technology as well as a built-in projector and uh, something to similar to like this where also uh, um, with the Maine University, the law school is also having their initiative. Our initiative is to, within the next several years, finish off every single classroom we have with uh, smart classroom type technology and electronics. Okay, And when we talk about smart classroom technology, we have things ranging from VCRs to DVDs to everything. The objective was to integrate the technology, you know, have a fixed projector in the room, and we decided on two templates. And what I mean by templates is there's a large classroom similar to this, we have one template. There's a small classroom, which is like a seminar room, we have another template. So that way, not all solutions fit into one, one, uh, one thing. We have a total of 14 rooms at the law school, of which eight have AV capabilities, okay? We started this initiative back in 1999, and this is how many that we were able to obtain. Now, unlike some people, I mean, we can't get funding for a brand new building yet, so we have to work with concrete, <laughs> concrete floors and concrete walls. That makes running cabling with no, no conduit very, very difficult. They right now currently can all support laptops. They have computers at the podiums. They also have VCRs and they can support DVD. And what I mean by support is not all the rooms have a DVD player. We have the computer able to play DVD, so hence they can play you know, the DVD even though without the player. One of those rooms, we have what is known as a 3M display unit. I don't know if you all know what that is, but it's an interactive, three-in-one combo uh, whiteboard that acts as a, uh, um, a smart board as well as uh, it can play, you can plug in a VCR to it or a DVD to it and it has sound capabilities, okay? Makers of 3M. Seven of the eight rooms, the remaining rooms, have Crestron technology. We chose Crestron over AMX only from the standpoint that the university, the main university, was going towards Crestron too. So we said, hey, it makes no sense to get a different technology when we have programming knowledge up in the main campus, and we could utilize that as well. However, if your relations with main campus are strained, you have to work that out. Okay? They all also have overhead projectors, and I don't mean that, that overhead projector. I mean the transparency projectors, okay? The, every single room has that. We're trying to move away from that. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. Our podiums and lecterns, um, four of the eight have microphone amplifiers or mic capable. You can plug in an external mic to it and, you know, or a lapel like, the, like this and then you can go with it, okay? And I talked about the VCRs and the DVDs. All the rooms have 
standard uh, connectors, meaning every single room now is the same. It wasn't like that four, year, four months ago. We had, what, eight rooms, and eight rooms were different. There were eight sets of instructions for each room. So you go to one room, can't do it. Because we did a slow upgrade to each room, we had different technologies, and you saw in the video, they said every six months or something new, yes, they bring it out and the vendor tries to push it on to you. Well, you buy it, but then you see, you see, oh yeah, there's a little tweak here, it's not the same. There's a little tweak there, not quite the same. And every single room now, unlike uh, University of UW here, we don't have wireless to the podium. We have a dedicated Ethernet, switched Ethernet, for the instructor to use. And why we chose that was because we felt that the instructor needed a rock solid connection, and wireless is getting better, but the hard wired Ethernet, we felt, was the best because of the construct of a concrete floor and everything like that. Okay. This is one of our classrooms. This is classroom number one or template number one. And there's the projector and there's the podium. This is actually when you first come in, that's how you see it. Okay. And on the podium itself, we use the uh, Crestron on the right. It's the large Crestron. That's the template number one. And it was important for us to have a reading lamp there because it was integrated light, lighting controls on this particular uh, template. And what I mean by integrated is I told the vendor I wanted one button, at most two. I wanted one button to turn it all on, including the lights, dim the lights. Okay. In doing so, though, you can't see what's happening at the podium or underneath the podium. So we needed a light to, for reading. And every room has a telephone, the red bat phone there, we call it. Along with that, we put instruction sheets on each podium so that people can know, if I want to use a VCR, what do you do? I want to use a uh, uh, DVD, what do you do? Okay. This is the underneath the podium itself. That's how it looks like. Uh, enough said about that, right? And this is template number two for our small rooms. Okay. Again, similar feel, look and feel. And this is how it looks. We used the smaller Crestron panel on this one. On the left-hand side, there's a smaller one, and we just used the monitor for the big flat screen there for the small template. We didn't think that the uh, large one would work here, the large Crestron, only from the standpoint that it's a, it's a smaller room, smaller footprint. And why did we go with two? Well, it was more expensive to get the larger one. Okay. And each room now has a uh, USB connector so that if people have the uh, thumbnail uh, drives, they can plug it in and go instead of looking for the machine underneath. Okay. Same thing, we have instructions and keyboards and whatnot. This one I'm not particularly fond of. You look in the back there, there's a ton of uh, rat's nest wiring there. Um, it wasn't planned out properly uh, from the standpoint that you can actually lift this entire frame out of the podium to service it. There's no door associated with this podium. The only way to service it is to lift the whole thing out, which means you're going to yank on wiring and all of that, and that's not very conducive, not effective as well. So we're going to change that. Some new initiatives. Talked about the smart rooms. Uh, we're going to replace all our overhead transparency projectors with dock cameras. Okay, And that's a major, major undertaking because we're talking about Crestron programming and all of that. Also, we're going to add uh, network monitoring for these projectors. Currently now, we have projectors that are about five years old that's still in production. And some of those are not capable where you can monitor remotely what's the projector doing. You could just basically plug it into an Ethernet port, assign an IP address to it, and you can monitor it remotely. So we're going to add that on there. Also, we're going to integrate more lighting into the Crestron. So, uh, I touch one button, turns off all the lighting. Not every room had it, only the, uh, only the large rooms have it. And we're going to put more power, uh, electric power to the seating. That's another initiative that's major. 
The other thing also is we're trying to get an additional FTE to dedicate themselves to classroom support, not AV support, classroom support, and there's a difference. Classroom support and, uh, also talks about uh, chalk, also talks about the podium itself, also checks everything else, not just AV. And then the single unit uh, DVD VCR combo, we're planning on putting a combo unit in there instead of uh, having it separate. So, I mean, it's a commodity item now. Everybody knows how to use the combo units. Everybody knows how to use a DVD. So we're going to put that in and change out. As the VCRs die, we're going to change that out. Okay. Some lessons learned when doing something like this. We're going to make sure that all the rooms are fairly similar. And what I mean by similar is you should have a template, like what we, what we decided. Post the instructions. Market your podiums. Over, uh, you know, put the instruction sheets on there. Put it on the web. Put it on, uh, mail it out to the faculty secretaries. Mail it out to everybody. And then, but before you do that, you should have it tested. So, you know, don't come back and say that's wrong. Uh, know your vendor during and after. One mistake that we did was during this process, the Crestron programming we found out with this vendor, we did not own the code. The vendor owned the code, and every change that they made belong to them, not us. So every time we need a change, we have to call the vendor and they say, well, it's going to cost us $225 per occurrence, even if it was a simple change. So make sure you own all that code and, and, and how much and how long will you be able to support all that code. You have to find somebody to train or something like that. Okay. That's a key point there because that was, that was a major headache when we found out we wanted to move away from them we couldn't because we were tied to the electronics. We were, we were a prisoner of our electronics. Okay. Muscle your way into space planning meetings. I'm sure uh, uh, <laughs> you can attest to that, Jonathan, in terms of space planning and all of these planning meetings. Every nook and cranny has to be explored. If you don't do that, you've got to have a lesson plan, a plan to do that. Okay? And one main lesson is, and I don't see a phone here, every room should have a telephone whether it rings directly to the IT department or directly into the AV department, it should have something there. What the professors used to do is they run down the hall and when they had a problem and try to find an unlocked door and try to call somebody. By that time, it's too late. Okay. Additional lessons learned, train your personnel because you may feel comfortable as the planner and the implementer, but your staff may not be comfortable. Sometimes people, even technicians, IT techs, they're not electronics techs. There's a difference there, okay? And you should train them at least just the basics in terms of troubleshooting, okay? Another lesson learned is we need to have on site replacement lamps. And what I mean by replacement lamps is the bulbs that power these projectors, if you don't have it on site, it's going to take a minimum of, what, a week to get it? And you can't guarantee that you're going to be able to change those lamps because, what, classes are in session, etc., and all of that, or special events on the weekend, you can't get in those rooms. So always have a replacement lamp on hand in the closet and make sure you have somebody there. We partnered with facilities management so that we write the ticket, they change it at 6 o'clock in the morning, and it's all done. Okay. And if you don't have one, Get a budget for AV requirements. Create a budget and then go with it. Meaning, you estimate there is, we estimate there's what, eight rooms that we need lamps. Buy a lamp. How much does the lamp cost? $500 a piece. Okay. Eight times five is what, four grand? And you go with that. We also set a schedule in terms of changing out these lamps. We needed to be able to say these highly used rooms will require more lamp changes. So we said every six months, this particular room will get a lamp change. And we shared that also with the facilities guys. Now, granted, it's not brand new like this in other places, but it, it does its trick. Okay? And above all, revise, update, and review these instructions because sometimes, for some unknown reason, these instructions are just maybe just a little bit off. And I just got, a, uh, I got an email message, actually, a couple of months ago when we changed over to Crestron. Uh, one of the faculty members said, you know, your, your, your instructions are 
excellent. That's great. But but you spell you misspelled the system word wrong or something like that. Or, you know, it's, instead of system, it says system on. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. So we changed that and we re, we emailed it back to them. Okay. We're going to hold off on the questions. I'm going to let Larry present what he has over at Tulsa, and then uh, you all can ask questions a little bit later. Okay. Hi, my name is Larry Curtis, and I'm with the University of Tulsa College of Law. And what we are doing over at Tulsa Law is uh, has been going on for the past eight years. Uh, about eight years ago, we got a new president who put wholehearted money into technology and updating everything on campus. So the first thing I want to start out with is a short video of that, and uh, we'll go from there. Here's a quick look at what's been happening at the University of Tulsa. Our campus has been transformed. The academic profile of our students has risen significantly. And our accomplishments are receiving national recognition. When you look around TU, you'll see amazing changes. New places, new buildings, and a whole new attitude. Our campus is now a residential community focused on academics. For the first time, a majority of our undergraduates, over 62%, live on campus in renovated residence halls or one of three new apartment complexes. A big part of this changed college life is the Fulton and Susie Collins Fitness Center, located west of Delaware and part of 30 new acres of campus. The Collins Center is the new home for workouts, exercise classes, and intramurals. Another landmark of the new West Campus is the Michael D. Case Tennis Center. It's the nation's premier collegiate facility and will host the men's NCAA 2004 championships later this spring. The campus expansion also includes an intercollegiate softball stadium, the just-opened soccer track complex, and the Hardesty Recreation Fields. Change at TU means progress. Just visit our College of Law. With its seven and a half miles of shelf space, the new award-winning Maybe Legal Information Center, combined with the Boche Legal Clinic, provides services that help the community as well as our students. In the center of campus, a major expansion and renovation is going on at Sharp Memorial Chapel. And just underway is a new 11th Street entrance and welcome center. New landscaping, lighting and signage tie everything together to create a beautiful, cohesive campus. It's no secret that TU has always been strong academically. Over the last few years, we've become even better. Today, one out of every 12 TU freshmen is a National Merit Scholar, and more than 60% of our freshman class were in the top 10% of their high school class. TU students continue to win national competitive scholarships at an amazing rate. Only two universities have won more gold water math and science scholarships than TU in the past six years. What's even more impressive is that TU's tuition is $12,000 a year less than these other prestigious schools. We've received a great deal of national recognition lately. The most notable comes from U.S. News and World Report's annual issue of America's Best Colleges. TU is now ranked 91st out of 248 prestigious doctoral institutions. That's high praise indeed. Great things are happening at the University of Tulsa. Our top quality curriculum is better than ever. And new programs like cybersecurity are making a big impact on the national scene. It's all just the beginning of a wonderful new era. Come by and see for yourself. Now, I must apologize. That was a bit of a plug for TU, but <laughs> we, um, I, I was just trying to make an avid point that eight years ago with the new president, we started this whole new ratification of the entire campus. And as you saw in the video, the Maybe Legal Information Center, which opened three years ago, was one of those projects. Um, but us locally at the law school, about 
seven years ago started dealing with multimedia technology. It started with our original director, Ben Chapman, who implemented bringing in an, uh, a projector and a screen and moving that around to the classrooms to see if professors would like having technology in the classrooms, and it exploded after that. Um, about two years later after that, they started uh, implementing technology into the classrooms. The objective uh, was to provide more interactive forms of legal uh, instruction. We had three templates, unlike uh, Northwestern, because of the design uh, issues with our classrooms. And we have about nine classrooms and two conference rooms. And our current setup is that some of them have multimedia uh, podiums with a PC and laptop hookups and all that wonderful stuff. But for this presentation, this is a layout of our law school. and. I'm just going to talk about our, one of our largest classrooms, room 202, and the technology that is uh, in there. This is the photo that we have of the, of the classroom. On the left, we have uh, just the, the shot from the front, and this one is the shot from behind. And as you can see, we have an in-focus projector. And to the far left is our multimedia podium. And in the center, we have another podium, and another desk, and another desk. And as you can see, it's rather crowded. Um, our, our most common layout, it, it does have an in focus or sharp projector. Um, the, we have six by eight uh, light cosmopolitan screens in the front. They're electronically controlled. We don't have them pulling down. Uh, power ports. Um, we got with our uh, uh, student advocates, and they said they wanted power ports in the classroom, so that's how we start implementing that. We have wireless access throughout our law school. We do not limit it in any way, shape, or form. Some professors do have a problem with having access to the internet in the classrooms, but most of them really haven't pulled for blocking that. And of course, the multimedia podium. This is our current multimedia podium. It's kind of dark on here, but it has a, has a screen and has a GX260 computer, a DVD, VC, uh, CDR, W combo. We have an ATI TV Wonder. We use this um, because some of our professors were a bit confused on how to switch the information uh, from different things in the classrooms. We pulled out our switcher and pulled and put in a TV wonder that allows us for TV tuner capabilities and to show VCR displays. In addition to that, we hook up our document cameras through the same system. Uh, we also have a VCR and a monitor in there. Um, about last week, my dean informed me that he was going to give me a one-time lump sum uh, money to completely redo our entire classrooms. So um, we're going to talk about that a bit. Uh, we're going to be installing next generation lecterns. Um, we're going to, in those lecterns, we'll have the built-in computer and uh, laptop hookup, room control systems, LCD display, uh, DVD VCR combo, sound system video recording system, and more powerful projectors, and whiteboards. Our current classrooms have chalkboards. I can't express to you how hard it is to keep everything clean with chalk dust everywhere. So we polled our, uh, polled our faculty on all the technology that they would like to have in the classrooms and then asked them if whiteboards were going to be OK. And with 80% uh, of our faculty coming out with a positive response, we decided to go ahead and just implement them on the next go around. This is the current podium layout that we have in our courtroom. Two years ago, we went in and redesigned our entire courtroom. It is a complete multifunctional facility now. It has uh, capabilities for video conferencing, cameras, uh, LCD displays, uh, projection screens, and everything like that. I went to several other schools in our area to check to see if there was a different podium that maybe would be more functional than our current one that we have in the courtroom. And we decided, because our faculty were so accustomed to it, that we would go ahead and use it for the rest of the classrooms. Um, we are going to be making a few changes. Uh, because we are going to permanently install a, a, a computer in there, we're going to raise our document camera station, which is kind of rather low, and raise it up a bit to where it would be towards the top. Um, underneath that, we'll have cabinet space for the computer, the storage of the wireless mic and keyboard, and uh, other items uh, thereof. The control system that we're going to be using, we chose Crestron because, number one, it's not as hard to program as some other programs. Uh, um, AXM is not as hard, but 
it's not free to go in and get uh, to get training on. Crestron has a policy, an A-plus policy, that you can go to any one of their larger distributor stations, ours is in Dallas, and get trained to do programming. So we're going to continue on that process. The control system will have control of the computer and document camera and VCR DVD, uh, DVD uh, combo. We'll have a graphic interface for switching uh, and, a, and a LAN control system and the LCD projector control. Um, we'll have a 15 inch uh, made by 3M display that will be touch sensitive. Um, that way it can be dubbed as just a, an additional monitor to view uh, PowerPoint presentations, kind of a comfort monitor, but also be used as a control, the way to control the way the switching is used in the classroom. We'll be uh, inputting an audio reinforcement system. Um, we're putting in bows. A lot of people think it's, think it's expensive, but it really isn't. We got a nice cut with our, lo our local dealer to install uh, a surround sound system and it's not too expensive. And we'll also be installing a sure wireless microphone systems. Our professors do not like to be mic'd, but there are times that they do get hoarse and they like to have a little bit of reinforcement, so we, we're going ahead and install that and also use it for uh, presenters in our classrooms. We do have DVD players in our computers, but have found that it be to be cumbersome for our professors to use. So we're going to go ahead and put in a combo unit that um, that will be more adequate for their needs. And we're also going to be mounting in each classroom a camera, not as wonderful as these cameras are in here, but just a Canon, a Canon video conferencing camera that will be hooked directly into our VCR and then loop back out to our computer. The benefit of that is there is time used to, to put the videos on the web for uh, streaming. We're going to cut that time by training our professors how to just do the simple click, click, click with uh, Windows Media um, Encoder to where it just automatically starts recording and puts on and it goes directly to our server and to where we only have to then take five minutes to set it up on the web. Uh, more powerful LCD projectors. I can't stress this enough. Our projectors currently are maybe at best 800 lumens, and that's because these projectors are about five years old. Our next generation uh, projectors are going to be XGA Mitsubishi uh, XD300Us. They're 2100 lumens, not extremely bright, but they last 4,000 hours. So we're going to save a ton on, project, on projector bulbs by using the more efficient uh, projectors. It is also the hub control system. The way that the, the, the QM, the Crestron control system works, is that it's just this little box that has a little web server and the connections uh, to the projector, and the projector then becomes a switching device. You don't have to have an, have an additional switching um, system. So we're cutting back expenses there. So we'll have DV, uh, we'll have uh, XGA quality from our projector, or from our document camera, from our computer, and then uh, S, uh, S video quality from our DVD VCR combo and uh, TV going into the projector. It's not high price, but very, uh, but not too low end. This here is a little bit more of a graphical detail of how it's going to be laid out in our classrooms. We're going to be putting some technology in our lecterns, but because we want to be able to move them around, we're going to put some in the back of the classroom, so we'll have cabling going back and forth. The way that our classrooms are designed, it's going to be best for us to drill, core drill through our floor in, in through and run conduit underneath. So this is a little bit more easier design. This over here, this uh, five group here is the lectern, which will have an, an Extron VJ switcher, a document camera, uh, two computer hookup, or a second computer hookup, the DVD VCR combo, and the computer there. But in the back, we'll have the amp, the, the pickup for the short wireless mic, the custom consult, and all, all that stuff. The benefit of that is that we reduce having to move around heavy stuff. Um, in the original, five years ago, whenever they installed the first system, we had floor boxes put in. They're not currently in use because they, ran the, they decided to run the wires across the ceiling, across the wall, and down. But with this system, because we are doing co uh, core drilling, we're going to use our boxes now to where we will not be falling over those wires that were coming across the floor. Low-tech but important whiteboards, like I said, our professors, our 
pretty much happy for. We're going to hand out uh, a packet of uh, markers to each professor. In addition to that, have markers in the classroom. Um, and we have um, student workers who are dedicated to our classrooms. They clean them every week. They're going to, or they will be cleaning them every week, and they'll be uh, taking care of those issues. And hopefully, we won't have any professors who decide to use a permanent marker. But yeah. if that happens, we'll have to replace that one section. Uh, new desk and chair. As you saw in the photo, the whole entire front row was crowded with stuff. Um, we, because the new the new podium is going to be lower to the ground, we're getting rid of the other podium. Uh, we're putting in a smaller desk, but still ample space to put books and other materials on. And we'll be using uh, the front row of our um, classrooms need to be ADA compliant, which was the additional of the other desk. We'll be removing that desk and taking out two seats uh, in the front row, so we remain ADA compliant. But that's about it. Hello. Okay. We're going to open up for questions. Um, does anybody have any questions pertaining to this? Um, the question was, has anybody explored the possibility of using wireless projectors? Over at Northwestern, we did not. Uh, we thought that the uh, wired connection to the projector was a better fit uh, because it just basically needs to be rock solid and we don't want it to be dying in terms of the wireless network. It's the same thing we agreed on at, at TU is that the, we felt the technology is too new that we didn't want to take the chance of something going wrong and not being able to f fix it. We wanted it to be rock solid as well. Does anybody in the audience use wireless? We are looking at consolidating some of that. Uh, the, the footprint, you're right, it is a limited workspace, but we haven't had anybody complain about, you know, like putting books on there or, or anything like that. If they bring a laptop, that's all they have, really. So uh, it's being looked at. We haven't done it yet. Um, at Tulsa, the, the, project, or the, the podium is actually much larger than our current one, or slightly area-wise, but shorter and less bulky. And it's the touch panel is the only thing that's going to be on the podium. So that's how we're taking up less space.
Yes, it does. We, we looked at that option, and it's for our next rooms, um, it doesn't mean that you don't change anything on the Crestron. It means there's change, okay, in terms of programming and all that. And uh, with the money that is going to be going towards that, we didn't feel that that was needed right now. We thought about that budget cut. It, it was just too expensive for us to implement and to have, because the DVD VCR combo was already there, we decided that since most of our presentations get put up on the web, we can teach our professors how to use the encoder to where we don't have to then store the DVD for later use or we can just use the tape later on. Yeah, the three. The 3M wall display is basically like a smart board. Right. Yeah, yes. The problem with uh, Tulsa, it wasn't going to be possible because the how big our display or how big the projector displays onto the uh, onto the screen. So if a pre professor had something up at the top, they would have to get a pole to, to yeah, encircle, and right. it just wasn't feasible. The, no the Northwestern solution was actually not to put it in the classroom, but to put it in the faculty lounge or the, or the conference room, one of the conference rooms. It was nice enough and compact enough where it didn't take a lot of space up, but at the same time, you can actually reach the top of it. Tulsa uh, looked at that and budget cut. We just couldn't afford to do that. That's right. yeah. Go ahead. Remember, remember what I said? One button to turn it on? <laughs> to, to have something like that, and I'm not saying that people are stupid or anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, it's too when it's too complicated, it won't be used. Right. That's what we found. Directly, their union. Yes. Uh, our students work for us, so basically, we just this is you know we hire them. This will be your job, and they understand it, and so that's how. Yeah, that, that happened to us, actually. And, and what we do now is we have, uh, whether it be a temp or one of my guys, they go around and check it three times a day. Before 8 o'clock, they do a physical classroom check. At noon, okay, because things happen at noon presentation, and then at the end of the day to turn off everything because people don't turn it off. No, no issues. Corner, gentleman in the corner. Oh, okay. The the lady in the blue. Yes. Yes, in our classrooms, they are very bright, and we're not going to be changing the light system currently. Um, which, uh, with the camera, it comes with a remote so that the professor can zoom in on himself, or if he, wants, if he walks around a bit, he can choose the distance in between. Um, that's... Uh, well, we actually... The way that we do it, we import the, the PowerPoint slide into the encoding system and we add them together, just stiff and cut, and that saves. But the initial transferring the video from videotape to, 
to a computer by them just doing that on their own that saves us a two hours of time that we don't have to do. <laughs> um we tested that out with our courtroom. Um, we, in our courtroom, have, have mics hanging down from the ceilings, so whenever a student asks a question, it picks them up. And we had tested out with uh, directional uh, cameras, and we decided because the way how they're so jerky, uh, that whenever, if the student asks a short question, the professor asks a short question, the student asks a short question, that it would zoom back and forth, and we do have multiple cameras in there where we could switch back and forth, but it's just the you know zoom focus, zoom focus, zoom focus, and you get that every time a student asks a question. We decided that just hearing the question was more important than than seeing the student ask the question. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah. voice activated. Yeah. When you design the room and you have to do renovations like this, it's very hard to put it into a room that's existing. If it's, if it's new construction, you can plan for that. We don't have the conduit in the walls to you know, accommodate things like this. So if you're going to do it, it's, it's not going to be cheap. It's, This building was what? It's only a year old, yeah. and and you, it, it's a it's a constant modification. You know what works, what's being used, and you have to basically adjust to it. There's no one solution that's going to fit everybody. It's it's basically endemic to what your school is going to use. You know. The one thing I want to say about Crestron, though, is that the newest version of it allows us to have a call button on our touch panel where it, it will send an instant message to the help desk. And true, someone might not be watching it, but that's how we're kind of going around that issue. But in addition to Crestron's also, I just want to plug, plug Crestron, but uh, it's, uh, it monitors our project, it'll be monitoring our projector source, so it will email us saying, hey, you only got 250 hours left in this bulb, order one. So that way we don't have to order a hunt, you know, nine of them ahead of time, we can just order whenever they need to be replaced. 
you mentioned that you're concerned about the Yes. Did that create some of these um, The question was about mm -hmm. core concrete. Yeah, basically you have to core, and then you have to go and see what's underneath the concrete, and then you go from there, run the raceway from there. And facilities actually does a great job of that. Uh, and one thing I neglected to mention was after you do the coring, you have to get from your vendor the, the CAD diagrams or somebody, the drawings for the electrical, because if you do not, I guarantee you, it's, it's not for you, it's for the next guy, because that next guy could be you, okay? And so you, 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 you look at these drawings and then you'll know where everything's laid out. The question was, uh, uh, did anybody, any of us looked at distance learning and, uh, and, and all that? That's paraphrasing. Uh, we, <laughs> we did look at it. We didn't feel that integrating the distance learning in a classroom setting of this size, let's say, okay, would, would work. It, it's, it's not an all-in-one uh, thing. We felt that the, if you're going to do distance learning, what is the maximum capacity uh, room that you can do it in? And they say it's about 35, 40. And it, it, you're talking about wall paint, you know, what, what appears best. You're talking about camera angles and all of that. So, no, we're, we're not integrating that into it. We're looking at the little polycoms uh, where you can buy and then go to a different seminar room, let's say. And, and we have use from the university side, too. They have distance learning, so we don't have to spend for that. And Tulsa did look at it, and we are actually going to start implementing it as well. Our, our courtroom has the capabilities. Uh, we have a, po a Polycom V4000 in there, and it lets us shoot uh, the photo or the images, uh, sound, and then it also lets us uh, show whatever we have up on the screen. It will transmit down a line and show up on the other person's screen. It could be PowerPoint, video, whatever. With the cameras that we're placing into these classrooms, because of the wonderful cabling system that we have in, at Tulsa, we're able to transmit over those lines to the Polycom unit. And so, true, we only have one Polycom and only able to do one class, but we're, we're able to do it if need be. Media site. Media site. Media site. Question here? Yeah. Is there monitoring of the uh, room usage? The answer for me is uh, right now no. Uh, how do we know if they're using it or not? When the people go around and check, the rooms three times a day, they actually find out that they do use it because things are all turned on or whatever and everything's out of place. And it's not because of uh, throwing keyboards to a side or anything of that sort. We see that on a daily basis it is heavily used and the bulbs burn out faster. And we, we have, the bulbs have a counter on there that you can check too. Um, we do um, every six months, we'll send, out, we'll send out a survey to find out how they're using it, how much, if it's increased from semester to semester to semester. That's all about what we've done. Our faculty are very responsive to the our surveys. Yeah, we have a yearly survey. A third of them respond. Hmm? 
Not right now, no. We, we do. Planning to. Uh, we are, but we have a VP inclined that lets us get through. So, yeah, we've actually have done that. I've, I've been at home and gotten a call to where I can't get this to play. And I, so I'm like, okay, so I, I dial in the VP client, run the GUI format for the, for the e-control system and able to control the classrooms and resolve issues that way. It's great. A firewall? <laughs> you didn't stop him. It was never an issue. I mean, it works great. But... Any other specific question? Yes. Is it a raised floor? It's a raised floor. That's not cheap, though. Not cheap. But we've had a new apartment, and we've had to reconfigure and move our program. Is that for the entire room? Just the well. Just the well, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good question. Um. We, uh, because of the way that the Bose sound system is set up, we can actually do directional. So we will be cutting down on the sound usage in the classrooms. But because budget restrictions, we can't in, we can't put in sound until later. We will be about four years from now. We're starting the process of, of, of building, redoing the entire court or the college, uh, totally updating it. But that will be in the future, but yes, we will. And, yeah. Are, are you also asking about uh, how the sound reverberates or whatever? Okay. What we did was we put up um, panels on the walls where it kind of like looks like you're in a uh, soundproof room type, and it's made of fabric and it absorbs some of that. Some of the rooms you can't put that in. So what we did also was put up curtains, so to speak. They're, cur they're, they're drapes, and that, that helps in some regard. There are no further questions. We thank you for coming and your time. Thank you.